Hey, future badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Small Business Podcast, where each episode we'll be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. In this episode, we're going to be discussing should you be a sole proprietor or set up an LLC for your new business. Now, sole proprietorship is often called doing business as, whereas an LLC is also known as a limited liability company. When you start to do your research, one of the areas that you will want to do is look into what your state requires you to have. Each state is going to be different, so it's important that you understand what the requirements are in your particular state. Now, before we jump in, time for a quick disclaimer. I am not a lawyer, nor do I pretend to be one. So anytime we are discussing legal or tax items, it's important that you do your due diligence, speak to a lawyer or an accountant as needed, as they know exactly what you're going to need for your specific situation and the requirements. So now with that said, let's discuss the two main types of entities that most small business owners will use. When I use the word entity, please know that I am referring to the way that it is described legally. The business is considered the entity. A lot of times we associate the business with ourselves, but you must keep in mind, your business is a standalone thing. And that is what people are referring to whenever they call it the entity. It's the actual business. Now, let's say you've already decided on a name and you're probably excited to get going. Maybe you're gonna call yourself something simple like Bob's Plumbing or maybe something cute like Pet Paws Pampering. Maybe you plan to just use your own name. Whatever direction you're planning, it's important to understand your options for forming your company. Since most small businesses are open as single person entrepreneurs, a lot of people use sole proprietor, also known as a DBA, doing business as. So a DBA is doing business as. Most states will allow you to operate your business this way. Sometimes you'll hear someone say using a trade name as well. So your trade name is the business name. So trade name is business name, doing business as is DBA. I know it can get confusing with all these different terms. Each state is probably gonna have something that is more common for your particular area. Now, to better understand this one, let's take a closer look using one of our previous examples. Let's use Bob's Plumbing. This means that you are Bob Jones doing business as Bob's Plumbing. Technically, Bob's Plumbing is what we call your trade name. You're doing business as. The use of trade names can vary by state. Many states require that you register the trade name with the state to ensure proper ownership. This allows the state to know who's operating underneath that name. If you are planning on operating your business this way as part of your research, you need to make sure you understand your state's requirements. Doing business as a trade name is great for those operating as single persons with no employees and staying within a smaller area with little chance of confusion, especially if you foresee your company remaining small and pretty local. If you have big plans for the future, this may not be the way to go. However, keep in mind, you always can convert down the line if needed. So the odds are, if you still want to do it this way, then just know as the business grows, you may need something more. I'm pretty sure there's quite a few people out there doing Bob's plumbing. Now, a couple of side notes before we move on to LLCs. Side note one, please know that ABC Company is way overused. Why? Back in the day of the Yellow Pages, you might recall that businesses were alphabetical, so people picked ABC or 123 intentionally to become the first part of their name so they could be the first people that people came across when using the Yellow Pages. With fewer people relying on the Yellow Pages and people starting to search more online, this is not going to help you bump you up. It's all about how you use and how you put present your business online. So you no longer need to be putting AAA towing or things like that. Online, it's more important for you to have a great reputation and having a great online presence with reviews, etc. Now, side note number two, whatever name you have decided on, you will need to check with your city, county, and state on the ability for you to use your new name. Don't be surprised if it's already taken. For example, I'm pretty sure Bob's Plumbing, someone's already taken in the past. So do your homework before you start purchasing those business cards and making new shirts. Plus, don't forget, you're going to need to snag your website. So you will need a backup plan on what your name will be and eventually your website. Now, don't worry. If you can get Bob's Plumbing, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get Bob's Plumbing as a website because the odds are someone in another state already has it. So just have something else that you're going to name your website. While there can be hundreds of Bob's Plumbing, only one person is going to be lucky enough to snag Bob's Plumbing website. Now, by the way, 
as a silly side note, I just went in and typed in Bob's Plumbing and someone bought it years ago and is now trying to sell it for thousands of dollars. That's crazy. Now, before we discuss the pros and cons of a DBA doing business as versus an LLC, limited liability company, first we need to understand what an LLC even is. An LLC or limited liability company is where you create an actual business entity on its own. Unlike doing business as, like we discussed earlier, this isn't Bob Jones doing business as Bob's Plumbing. It is actually Bob's Plumbing LLC doing business as Bob's Plumbing LLC. The LLC is the actual entity company all on its own. So who is most likely to use an LLC? Well, typically this is done when more than one person is part owner of the business. For example, if you and your brother open a business together, you would probably do it as an LLC and form a company. However, please know you can have a single person LLC as well. I myself own a couple of single member LLCs. For example, when I had my Baskin Robbins, I held it under an LLC as I do my business coaching, as I do my brokerage and other things. It really just depends on your particular situation. Now, don't get me wrong. Just because you have more than one person, you aren't required to do an LLC. It just happens to be popular this way, especially for tax purposes. Once again, your tax specialist can verify what is the best choice for your particular situation. By the way, there's another big reason that people use LLCs, and that is more for protection. An LLC is going to give you more protection if something was to happen on the job. So for some businesses, it's much better for them to have an LLC because of the liability issues. If somebody was to sue them, they would sue the LLC and it would create some protection between the personal assets of the business owner and the business. We'll talk about this a little bit more here shortly. So you've decided to do an LLC. So now what? Well, LLCs are actually filed with your state's corporate commission and require more upfront work to put them together. Also to form an LLC, it's going to cost you more money than a doing business as. Now, with that said, it's easy to do in most states and you can save a lot of money by doing it yourself. It's a pretty easy process, for example, here in Arizona. So you can go pay thousands of dollars for someone to do it for yourself or you can do it yourself and pay 50 bucks. The key is to read everything carefully and fill out the paperwork properly. And if you're unsure, just ask them. They'll be glad to help you out. For those of you that don't want to take the risk, then I recommend something like LegalZoom or a local lawyer who can help do it for you. When I did my first business, I had LegalZoom do it because I was in a time crunch and I didn't understand the process. Because I was under the gun, my franchise needed it and I wasn't comfortable with the process, so I paid someone to do it. Ever since then, I've done them myself and I've also helped other people walk through theirs. The key is to do your homework, read carefully and check all the boxes to make sure it doesn't get kicked back. Make sure you understand your state's process. Some states will have you also post it in a local paper and they have resources to help you do this. But as I mentioned earlier, if you are uncomfortable, definitely seek out the help and guidance of somebody. Okay, now that you are familiar with these two most common entities, what are the advantages to being a sole proprietor doing business as over a limited liability or vice versa? While there are a few differences, the biggest difference between the two comes down to liability. You remember I mentioned that earlier. Many folks prefer to put the liability on the company and not on themselves personally. When acting as a sole proprietor, you are the business. Therefore, you are responsible for all the debt and liabilities the business has. However, as an LLC, the company or the LLC is responsible. Well, sort of, because this can be a little misleading at times. It is important that you understand that you could still be personally liable for the debts, whether you're an LLC or not, because they will have you do what's called a personal guarantee, typically on any money that the business will take out. In most cases, if you take out loans or some other documents that you might sign, you might end up giving what is called this personal guarantee. And what that means is if the company defaults, you personally will take responsibility for that debt. So it's important that you understand that an LLC does not guarantee straight up protection on the debt side of it. Typically, it will protect your personal assets if something horrible was to happen. For example, if a job went terribly wrong, someone could sue your company and get the assets, but not necessarily yours personally. But once again, seek legal counsel for your particular concerns. Plus, I'm sure it would depend upon what happened and how deep that liability goes. If you have particular concerns, I just run them by a lawyer. 
accidents happen, but it's really going to come down to how they plan to sue you. Another difference is how tax flow from your business to you personally. In a sole proprietorship, you will do a Schedule C and claim the income. As an LLC, depending upon the ownership, the income will flow according to how you set up the company. Typically, though, as a single person LLC, you will still flow it through your personal taxes and you will also have a Schedule C. But once again, see a tax specialist for your particular situation. Let's take an example of you and your brother being 50-50 partners in the business. In most cases, you will split the income as well as the debt. However, your brother might be a silent partner who only receives 20% of the profits. You will want this in the operational agreement of the LLC versus a handshake most people do with the DBA. Quick side note, always get these types of arrangements in writing. It isn't a matter of if, but rather when this will become an issue down the road. So which one, an LLC or a DBA, is right for your business? Well, I'd love to tell you which one is best for you, but as you can see, it really comes down to a preference and any concerns you might have at the time. In the end, what matters to you the most? If your business has a huge liability potential, for example, hurting other people or yourself, then you might consider an LLC. If you have assets that you want to protect, then an LLC is probably also the best bet for you. Don't forget, If you don't have these concerns, then you can always start as a sole proprietor, but you can always switch down the road if needed. If you have a pooper scooper business, a sole proprietor is probably the best way for you to go just doing a business as. However, once you start hiring people to be part of your team, it might be best for you to switch over to an LLC. Once again, your specialist in your neighborhood will be able to tell you which one's best for you. But in most cases, those of you acting alone will do a sole proprietorship and those with lots of liability, employees and assets will probably check out an LLC. Also, if you are part of a franchise, odds are they will want you to form an LLC anyways. I know when I started my first business, I was told by the franchise I needed an LLC. And since I had no clue how to do this, as I mentioned earlier, I turned to LegalZoom to help me out. Also, most brick and mortar type of businesses will usually form an LLC as they tend to have more liability due to customers coming through the door and the amount of assets that they'll have. But once again, check with your local lawyer or accountant for any concerns or questions. Now, before we wrap this up, I want you to know that there are other types of companies you can form. However, for the vast majority of you, these will be the two main options that will work for your size of business. For example, doctors and dentists that pull their resources together to run a local office will often work together in a partnership and form a PLLC, a partnership LLC, if you will. Those running multiple LLCs under one umbrella might do a corporation, and this is an umbrella over smaller businesses. Sometimes you'll see this with franchises, and then there's a whole nother thing of S-Corps versus C-Corps that tie into how you are taxed in the business. Once again, see an accountant if this works for you. This episode is just meant to give you an overview. You should be able to get some great advice for a basic counseling fee from a local lawyer or accountant. If you want to go at this alone, use caution and do your homework. Hopefully this episode has at least answered your basic questions and you have a better idea than what you had just 20 minutes ago. Remember, before you go finalizing a name for your company, just check what is available with your state and if you need to register it. Later, we will discuss setting up a website for your business. So while you are researching, go on over to GoDaddy and see if by chance you can lock it up. At least that way you have it. Even if you just let it sit there until you're ready, at least you know you have it and nobody can take it from you. If you haven't already, go do your homework. Check with your city, county, and state on what you need to do. Do you plan to do a doing business as sole proprietor or form an LLC? Now, in our next episode, we're going to jump into debt free or taking out a business loan because that is a huge decision for some of you. Don't forget to download all the previous episodes if you haven't already. And since you're continuing on, don't forget to also subscribe to the Badass Business Owner Podcast where we can help you continue to run your business once you have those doors open. With that, I'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.